and running for everyone. And just double checking the speed. Looks like we could be live in a couple of seconds here. And we are live. Welcome everyone to the Bite Back Tour. Today we are in the city of South Pasadena. Uh, to begin, we're going to start off with introductions. My name is Levy Sun with the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. And we're going to go around a circle here to introduce other folks. Uh, go ahead, Ali. Hi, everyone. My name is Ali Gaspar, and I'm the Outreach Assistant here at the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. Go ahead, Christian. Hi, everyone. My name is Christian Luna, and I am one of the education specialists at the district. All right, and Pablo. Hi, everyone. My name is Pablo, and I'm the communication specialist here at the district. And just jumping in, uh, we have Dane. Oh, you're muted, muted Dane. Dane. Sorry about that. My name is Dane Militich. I'm a vector control specialist, too, uh, at the district, and I work in the city of South Pasadena. All right. Thank you for the introductions. Uh, let's just jump right into it. Today, we got a really fun lineup for you all in South Pasadena. Uh, first up, we're going to talk about West Nile virus. Uh, right now, it is pretty obvious from the data that we've been collecting that West Nile virus is prevalent and widespread throughout uh, LA County, more specifically here in San Gabriel Valley. So we'll give you some uh, tips on how to stay safe. Also, uh, we know a lot of people in South Pasadena have been buying a lot of mosquito traps or mosquito zappers. We're going to find out if those are actually useful. And then finally, we've been getting a lot more questions lately about repellent use. So residents in South Pasadena may be wondering what repellent actually works and if I get it, how do I properly apply? So let's talk about that in a bit, but first I just wanna dive into some of the things that we do as a district here, uh, cause many of you may not know exactly what we do. You probably just think of us as the mosquito people, but we do a lot more than that. Um, we, we do uh, everything that is inclusive of something called the integrated vector management is just a fancy way of saying that we have a scientific approach to how we control mosquitoes in your city environment in a safe way. Uh, so one of the biggest departments that are, are in our agency is the surveillance department. And they're the ones that you may see going out and setting up mosquito traps, uh, not only in South Pasadena, but throughout San Gabriel Valley. Uh, they use these different, they actually use different types of traps to target different species or types of mosquitoes that are flying around South Pasadena. And Pablo just shared a, a picture there of some of our, our surveillance staff working. Um, top left corner, we have Jimena who's setting out something called a gravid trap. Those type of traps are meant to, to capture female mosquitoes that are ready to lay eggs. And these are the ones that have already bit some folks or birds and they're ready to uh, get sucked up into that trap that Jimena, Jimena has in that, in that white box. In the bottom left corner, we have Jung who is setting up these OV traps. So they are meant to capture a certain type of mosquito that many of you are aware of called Aedes mosquitoes, also known as ankle biters, also known as black and white mosquitoes. And uh, these are to trap those type of mosquitoes that like to lay their eggs individually above the water line on, in containers. So using all the information they capture, they'll bring it back to the lab and there's a photo of Jackie there sorting through uh, mosquitoes um, and other insects potentially caught in this trap to make sure that we get these not only counted to know what um, the mosquito abundance is like, how much mosquito is, are out there, but also to send them out for testing. Uh, does anyone else want to add in a bit about surveillance and what you know? I'd just say to um, to keep an eye on those cups that Jung has because they might come up later on during this uh, tour. <laughs> ah, good teaser. All and right. uh, major props also to our surveillance team because uh, I think another question we get a lot is about dead birds and our surveillance team are the ones that test are the birds that um, residents call in uh, to get them tested for West Nile virus. Uh, and something that we're very familiar with here at the district is that 
Uh, dead birds are a big red flag that West Nile virus is in the area. Oh, that's a good point, Pablo, because the first dead bird that came up positive with West Nile virus actually happened, uh, or the bird was collected in South Pasadena. So uh, that's a very good point to make. If you see any dead birds um, around your community, you can report them to westnile.ca.gov. And um, I think the hotline is 1-800-WNV-BIRD. So we have data that comes in and surveillance is, are the ones that help drive that data into our agency to help us make better decisions on how to react. So I'm gonna actually bring in Dane, who's from our operations department. And Dane, so you clearly are the one that received this data from surveillance. How do you use that in South Pass and in other cities around South Pasadena? So what we do is we take uh, the data from the surveillance department um, and we focus our response efforts in uh, areas where traps that come up either with um, West Nile uh, positive mosquitoes or um, high, high trap counts. We, we focus our um, efforts in those areas um, and try to make sure that we're up to date on all the sources in the area and also, you know, canvas the area, look for new sources because new stuff's popping up all the time, so. So what kind of uh, sources do you usually see out there? So there's a bunch of different types of sources. There's storm drains, there's flood channels, there's um, sump pumps and driveways, landscape drains, gutters, uh, fish ponds is a big one. Um, uh, swimming pools, of course, are huge. Uh, unmaintained swimming pools, we regularly um, try to keep uh, track of because those are huge breeders, so. Oh yeah, when you mention swimming pools, I always think of that statistic I hear all the time that if a, if a full swimming pool is completely green, there's no circulating pump, there's no chlorine, that, that really bad pool can produce up to 3 million mosquitoes a month. So I can only imagine 3 million mosquitoes <laughs> flying around a neighborhood. That does not sound like a good time. No, it's not a good time. And they're usually flying at me, so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dane, I have a question. Um, what can yeah. residents do actually to make sure that their pools are clean? That way that's one thing that you out in the field have to take care of. Sorry, you cut out. Can you say that again, please? Oh, yeah. Um, I was going to say, what's something that residents can do um, to make your life easier? That way that's one less thing that you have to take care of. So if, if a pool is unmaintained, um, that means that it's, the pump is not circulating, it's not chlorinated or uh, blue. So if it is unmaintained um, and it's going to be for an extended period of time, um, it's best to contact the district so we can ensure that the pool has no larval activity uh, because very quickly an unmaintained uh, swimming pool can turn into a mosquito heaven so what they can do is they can let us know and then we can try to work with them if if they're not going to be able to get the pool back up to functional status um within a timely fashion yeah good to awesome. know thanks yeah mm -hmm. it's good insight uh, just curious i know you're out there in the field where are you today uh today i'm in south pasadena i'm at the south pasadena public library uh, I was conducting a, an inspection um, this morning and uh, found some some sources that were breeding. Um, I could go ahead and show you guys one of the sources that the stuff, the kind of stuff that we um, inspect regularly. Yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, so this is a this is just a storm drain. Um, it's just let me see if we can flip this. So this is a drain um, and it's kind of like, you know, under, it was underneath this dumpster, but basically this is the kind of stuff that um, breeds mosquitoes because year round it holds water. And um, it's one of those things where it's kind of out of sight. So you have to be very vigilant when you're inspecting properties because this kind of stuff uh, it's easy to miss. So 
we keep an eye on stuff like that. And um, a lot of times they breed. So we had, we had to keep a close eye on them. So good to know. And for those of you watching, mm -hmm. yeah. this is the uh, bite back tour in the city of South Pasadena. Uh, we're just following Dane actually. He's right there at the South Pasadena library. He just showed us a drain. I can only imagine if that's just one drain on a property like that, there could be hundreds throughout the city. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of drains uh, in South Pasadena. <laughs> uh, Ali, were you going to ask? A, yeah, no, I was going to say, it actually reminds me of um, the time that you and I went, Levy, to have our um, first actual bite back work shop, um, which is a part of our grassroots program, which was there at the South Pasadena Library. So it makes me think of like all the potential mosquitoes that could have bit us or all the sources that we passed by without, you know, knowing. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It's for all you residents that are watching in South Pasadena. If you remember, we did have a bite back uh, workshop there. Tons of fun. We learned a lot from you and hopefully you learned a lot from us as well. We're hoping to come back uh, eventually once uh, COVID-19 kind of lifts a bit more and we can interact again. Uh, we had a lot of fun that day. Um, so Dane just showed us really quick on the different types of stuff he sees out in the in the field to kind of categorize what Dane does and what we all do. We really tackle a lot of the public sources, the things that are easily accessible to us. What we need your help with and your neighbor's help with is all the private property sources, the things that lurk in the corners of backyards like saucers and, and buckets and even used tires. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pivot over to uh, Pablo and Christian, you guys have, are in the field as well. So can you tell me a little bit about what um, you guys are doing out there? Yes, um, I'm going to hand it over to Christian right here, who's going to give you some examples of what we uh, sometimes see at residential homes. I'm going to flip it over here. Hi, go ahead, everyone. Christian. So, um, yeah, so I when we are thinking about like what residents can do, we have programs for students. So we have our classroom programs that teachers can sign up for, um, but we also have citizen science programs that students can become a part of um, through their teachers. So I'm gonna just show you a little bit of what a student would do if they're participating in our citizen science program. So we have a program called the Vector Inspector Program, which is called, uh, or short is VIP. And so we give the students a little um, kit like this, and it comes with a cup, and it comes with a pipette. And so this is for students grades K through uh, eight. And so what they would do is they would actually go around and look for anything in their yard or in their uh, on their property that could be holding water um, and collect a sample of that water so that we could analyze it and see what's growing in it. So we're gonna take a look at our little property here and see if there's anything that could be growing mosquitoes. So we have a rain barrel. Um, so this could definitely hold a lot of stagnant water. Um, and even just like at the top, it could collect water here. Um, and if there are any, I don't know if you can see that, but if there are any um, holes in the screen, this would be a perfect place for mosquitoes to go in there and, and grow. So. Um, Luckily, there's no water here, so we can skip this. Um, let's see over here. So I see a plant. So um, under the plant, you can see that there is a plant saucer and there is water here. So a student would just collect some of this water and put it into the cup. And um, so this would be their sample. And if there were mosquitoes uh, in their aquatic stages, we would want to try to grab some of those. I don't see any in here. So once they find the water, they want to dump it out, right? Get rid of that water. Um, so we could go to another one. So here is a toy. Maybe some kids were having some fun, forgot to remove it. So we're gonna, and it collected some water, maybe sprinkler water or uh, rainwater. So we collected our sample and dumped that water out. And, Another little bucket here. Maybe some kids were playing. There is water in there. So we can collect a sample and put it into our cup. And once again, dump that water out. Um, and so those are all of the ones that we have here. So once 
they are done with their collection, they would, we would want them to put everything away, right? Get rid of these items. So either toss them out, or if it's something that they want to keep, just store them away from rain or sprinklers that can collect that water. For our project, they would actually send this in to us via their classroom. And then um, we would give them an analysis. So we'd let them know what kind of insects are growing in here. So maybe it's um, mosquito larvae or pupae, or maybe it's rotifers or different things that are commonly found in their backyards. So this is a really fun program for students. Our other program, I'm gonna set this off to the side, is um, our grid program. So Operation Mosquito Grid. Um, and so with our grid program, students are, instead of looking for the water, they will have to get rid of all the sources, but they um, put a cup out like this, like you saw Jung earlier in one of the photos, and they um, set a, a lure out. And today we've had it out for a whole week, which is what they would do. And mosquitoes, 80s mosquitoes may have laid their eggs on the inside. Previously, this was filled with water, no longer. Um, it evaporated. So after the week, they would pull this paper out just like this and submit photos so that we could see if there are any 80s eggs on the paper and that would give us evidence that there are 80s in the area. So I actually don't see any eggs. So yay us, we do not have 80s in this area right here, right now, uh, luckily. Um, but students would send this in to us and then we would have some evidence. And so this is a really great way for students to um, provide public health data and also use their science skills outside of the classroom and in their backyards. Um, so if teachers are interested in this, they can go onto vectoreducation.org and they can sign up for any of our programs, including just our, uh, our classroom programs. So either citizen science or classroom. Yeah, on, I should have screen shared the, uh, the vectoreducation.org website. Do you all see that? Yes, we see it. Awesome. So yeah, any teachers, educators, homeschool teachers, anyone who's interested, this citizen science project can be for you. Is that correct, Christian? Yes. So um, if you are a teacher, please just uh, go onto our website and you can sign up for our programs. We are um, currently still taking some, um, some teachers that are interested and this would be taking place during the fall. But go ahead on our website and sign up and we will uh, get back to you. Um, and if you're thinking like, oh my gosh, it's been a crazy year already. I don't want to make this year start really <laughs> crazy again. Um, don't worry. All of this, we do all of the heavy lifting. So just sign up and then uh, we will take care of all of the difficult things that all of the organizing and logistics. Um, and we just need you to volunteer your students to participate in our programs. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Christian, for showing us that. And also uh, to all the teachers, it's pretty exciting to see that what we use in vector control is also what's being used in the classrooms with the students. Yes. So that's great. And if, you, if you're a parent, like, please, you know, let your teachers know that this is available to them. They might not have heard of it. So, uh, you know, just reach out and let them know that they can participate in citizen science through our district. All it's right. free program, a right? Free free it's free 99 it is free so yes sign up all right thank you so much Christian. now there's no reason not to sign up exactly yeah <laughs> yes um, if you're just watching this is the bite back tour in the city of south pasadena uh we just heard from christian who just talked about the camera. prison science yeah, project uh so probably want to meet yourself or i can meet you here there we go and uh if you have any questions, drop it into the chat box, drop it into the message, uh, the message box below. We'll be monitoring for any uh, questions that come through. In the beginning, we teased about one thing that people have asked us about in South Pasadena, and it's whether or not those mosquito traps actually work. Um, a study from the East Coast from one of the universities said that these mosquito light traps or these bug zappers they capture 99.9% of beneficial insects and almost very little to no mosquitoes. 
So we decided let's try something out on our side on the West Coast. So Pablo, uh, I know that you set up a trap that's similar. It's not quite a bug zapper, but it does lure in and trap what they call mosquitoes. Um, can we see what happened to this little test you put up? Yeah, so I'm sure Dane is familiar with some of these traps. Uh, I know we've seen them a lot in South Pasadena. Uh, but yes, this is a quote unquote mosquito trap that has a light a fan uh, and it's supposed to emit a CO2 odor to potentially attract any mosquitoes. So I've had it set up all week here. Um, and as you can see, you do have to have this uh, trap plugged into an outlet. And I've had it set up out here all week. So let's see what we found. So you untwist it and it has a little section at the bottom where you potentially caught any mosquitoes. Pablo, and, do our surveillance, I mean, yeah, do surveillance use this kind of trap? No. So to be very clear, our surveillance departments do not use uh, these uh, quote unquote mosquito traps. Uh, they use other traps that are specified for mosquitoes using CO2. And just like you saw earlier with Christian, the OB cups that are trying to catch um, mosquito eggs. And uh, they have other traps that catch Culex mosquitoes. Um, in what they're trying to uh, sur uh, survey for mosquitoes in our area. But yes, our surveillance department does not use these uh, mosquito traps. It's mainly for our own experiment in communications to see what we find. So here's the mosquito, here's the trap. I'm gonna take the top off and see what we find here. You can see stuff is already flying out. And based from what I can see, if you can see clear closely here, uh, we have a lot of other insects. This is clearly not a mosquito, way too big, and have some, some insects flying out. Um, I see midge, here's a, a midge, a non-biting insect, commonly mistaken for a mosquito. Um, here's another, this is a crane fly, uh, commonly mistaken for a giant quote unquote mosquito, crane flies as we are all familiar with, do not bite. They are beneficial insects to, um, to birds. And then some moths. And I honestly really don't see any mosquitoes here. Oh, I see one here. So there's one. And I really don't see anything else. I see a lot of midge. That's the biggest thing I see. Here's one more mosquito. It's a female mosquito. And here's another one. So it looks but, like our your, it looks like here. our test is similar to what we what the studies have shown, and a lot of the insects captured are beneficial insects. Correct. So as you can see here, as I'm separating, I have about four mosquitoes, and then a large number of beneficial insects that unfortunately found their way into this mosquito trap. Uh, because it is sucking these, uh, these uh, insects in. And like you mentioned, Levy, these are all beneficial insects that are helping our gardens, helping uh, other larger mammals for food, uh, and anything else that beneficial insects serve and help uh, create a better ecosystem in our yards and in our neighborhoods, versus just very small amounts of mosquitoes that this trap caught in a week's time. So like you're seeing here, only four mosquitoes caught, and then a bunch of other beneficial insects that do not bite, don't do anything to us other than serve great purpose to our environment. All right. Well, thank you, Pablo, for showing us that. So I guess the actionable item here is if you have one of these um, off-the-shelf store-bought mosquito traps or zappers, uh, you, you hopefully you'll now know that they are not that effective at killing off the mosquitoes they unfortunately do kill more beneficial insects. So um, that's definitely good insight for us to know. Uh, but something else also um, we need to be aware of, and that comes down to uh, vegetation. So I'm gonna actually toss it over to Allie for a bit to talk about how things like bromeliads and um, ivy play into the mix. Because mosquitoes clearly grow from um, stagnant water sources. So Ali, what do I, things like ivy and bromeliads play into the, into the equation? Hi, Levy. So ivy and bromeliads and other very dense vegetation actually hide mosquitoes from us. 
So they provide the shade and this coverage um, that allow mosquitoes to rest. As you can see behind me, um, I am not proud to show that I have some ivy of my, you know, here at home um, and some other dense vegetation. But um, what they do is they'll actually hide here and rest from heat. And then whenever you're outside, you, you are that blood meal. So they're gonna want to come out from these areas. And usually these areas harbor the most mosquitoes um, in the neighborhood or at your home or wherever you are. Um, so you wanna make sure that what you do with this, you wanna trim it back. That way you can allow airflow because mosquitoes aren't very strong flyers against the wind. So if there's a lot of airflow, you can eliminate a lot of mosquitoes. Um, definitely cut back on this mosquito bites um, or really the smartest thing to do would just be the landscape. So, you know, make the plans to turn to California plants. Um, not only are they drought tolerant and require a lot less water, but they are nice and that um, colorful feel that maybe you're looking for. Like I know um, my household is a fan of the green. So, you know, there are a lot of beautiful green succulents or um, other green native plants you can use to um, re-landscape your yard and make it a little more um, bite free and um, to keep the mosquitoes at bay. Yeah, something. So um, maybe um, showing some photos right now um, yeah, to give some you some ideas of, the, of what you can do. For the native stuff at uh, landscaping that people can do. Um, and it's quite beautiful. A lot of people have a misconception that California native plants are ugly or ain't, <laughs> ain't that appealing, but it really can be when you put everything in, let it do its thing, it will grow really nicely. Um, the other thing about scaling back the vegetation is not only to, re to have more wind flow through there, but primarily to reduce the humidity. Uh, humidity can be quite inviting, especially mm -hmm. in dense vegetation for mosquitoes. So if you take out that humidity, and you introduce California landscape, you're, you're, you're actually gonna be making your property more bite free, like Ali said, but you'll be bringing in some beneficial insects from the neighborhood and also in the surrounding um, areas. So thank you for that, Ali. But I, I have to wonder, Ali, clearly landscaping won't do the trick because in the city where we can't get rid of 100% of mosquitoes. So is there anything else we can do to protect ourselves from them? Yes, um, I say take it back to the, the level of personal responsibility when we're outside. Um, I know not everyone has the means to completely re-landscape their yard, but um, everything starts at home. Um, so when we're out here, definitely, we always are repellent to stay bite free. So especially with it being hotter right now, a lot of... Ali, you cut out. You oh, actually cut out for a second, Ali. So... Oh. Let me just jump in and fill in that I thought I think you're going to say, and that is to make sure that you wear repellent. Um, and then we have four different ingredients that you can choose from. So if you're at the store looking for repellent, you can pick up any bottle and look for any of the following ingredients, or at least one of the following ingredients, and that's DEET, oil of lemon eucalyptus, also known as PMD, and also, uh, you could choose picaridin or IR3535. Um, over the past couple of years, there's been an increase in popularity for oil of lemon eucalyptus or PMD. Whatever works for you, but just make sure you follow the label directions. Um, Ali, your, your connection is pretty spotty, but I'm gonna throw it back to you to see if you can demonstrate how to put on repellent. So uh, can you hear me now, Ali? All right, not yet. So let me continue on and just show you a, a quick diagram of how to put on repellent. Um, this is something that you start, it's a pretty simple three-step process. You start out with obviously choosing the, the bottle. Then you want to apply it to any exposed skin, uh, that, whether it's your ankles, legs, arms, and even necks, uh, your neck. And don't spray your face directly, please don't. Uh, you want to spray your hands first and then apply it to your face. And if you're using any sunscreen uh, while you're outdoors, use sunscreen first, let it dry out and then add on the protective layer of repellent. Similar uh, instructions apply to students or to kids. Make sure you are the one applying to the kid, uh, apply to your hands first, and then apply the repellent that was on your hand to the kid's exposed skin, uh, including around their face. Do not put any repellent on their hands because uh, knowing kids, they're gonna most likely put the, those hands in their mouths. Um, Ali, are you back with us? Hi, Levy. Yes, I'm back. Um, can you all hear me and see okay? 
Uh, yes. Anything else you want to add regarding repellents? Um, just a little, I'm not sure if you mentioned it already to cut out from my end as well, but um, you can actually find repellent um, pretty much in any outdoor or gardening section uh, when shopping in stores, all of the bigger um, name brand stores. So, um, and you can also order it online as well. Um, so to residents, just make sure that you're looking at the ingredients that Levy had said, um, and you should be good to go. All right. Thank you so much, Ali, for that. Uh, one last thing uh, before we near the end of the Bite Back tour here in South Pasadena uh, is our Bite Back program. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, check it out at bitebackchampion.org. Uh, it is a grassroots approach to mosquito control in your neighborhood. We know that you we know that um, things like treatments using pesticide is a very short term solution, and it's something that we prefer not to use unless it's an actual emergency. But the best way to tackle mosquitoes is to work with you and your neighbors. So if you have neighbors that are just fed up with mosquitoes, join us in the Bite Back program. I actually wanna give a shout out to neighbors who are uh, from Bushnell, Wayne and Fletcher. You guys have been involved with us in the past, uh, working with us to oust these mosquitoes and get better insight on how to make your communities more bite free. And we want more residents in South Pass to sign up at bitebackchampion.org so we can make all of South Pasadena more bite free. So now that we're at the end here, I want to just go around the circle of folks that have joined us so we can do some, any last minute uh, remarks. So I'll go around the room here. Christian and Pablo, anything you want to say to the residents of South Pasadena? Yeah, I just want to encourage um, teachers and parents to sign up their kids for um, our citizen science programs. Parents, please let your teachers know that this is available um, and we would be happy to have you joining our program. All right, Dane, anything from you? Yeah, um, yeah, I just wanted to remind uh, residents to keep your yard dry and or as dry as you can. If there's any permanent sources that you can't get rid of the water, let us know and we'll make sure that uh, we can figure something out. And also, you know, just wear repellent a lot of people don't want to wear repellent, but you know, it helps. So put it on. That's it. Absolutely. Uh, Pablo, anything from you? Yes. I just want to uh, reiterate again what we saw earlier with the, the, the quote unquote mosquito trap that we're catching more beneficial insects than actual mosquitoes. Uh, I know we've seen a lot of those uh, traps in South Pasadena. Uh, so just, you know, give it a second thought before you get one of those. They are expensive and you do have to have them plugged into an outlet. Uh, something you don't have to have plugged in or pay for is simple tip pass protect. Uh, tipping out any stagnant water and eliminating any, uh, any containers that can hold water and making sure you're storing those items in a dry area so they don't collect any stagnant water. Those three simple tips uh, can keep us all uh, safer and prevent mosquitoes in our community. Awesome, thank you, Paul. By the way, I just got to plug in the way you you and Christian are standing there. It looks like you're about to do a TikTok video. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, this way, this way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, Ali, anything for our residents in South Pasadena? Yeah, um, just to make sure that everyone is wearing mosquito repellent when they're outside and just to create the habit now, just like um, you wouldn't leave the house without a mask or hand sanitizer. Make sure you don't leave without your repellent. It will be your new best friend. All right. Thank you, Ali. And with that, that ends our Bite Back tour in the city of South Pasadena. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you want to know where we're stopping off next, tune into bitebackchampion.org and we'll have a, you can see a list of all the cities we're hitting up in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, South Pasadena, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay bite free.